Here at Tormach, we love to share your stories. So here's Coulter Crossley, who's making some high-end automation systems with his Tormach machines. Tormachs are great machines, but I live in Houston, Texas, and the oil crash has not helped machine shops. So in this particular local market, there are, there are countless machine shops starving for work. I did a lot of different things and, 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 it, and tried a lot of different things, and, it's, and it just controls just seem to be where it just keeps coming back to. My customers are happy with it, they're, not that they weren't happy with my machine work, but the, the truth is, you know, when you talk to a customer and you say, I don't just do controls, if, if, if you're having a problem interfacing this motor to your shaft and you don't have any machine shops lined up, give me the dimensions, I'll make that happen. Just ship me your whole panel. I'll, I'll, I'll cut it out, I'll make the HMI, I'll machine any brackets that need to be done, I'll do it all. It's just a turnkey package. It'll be plug and play when you get it. You connect a few wires and some sensors up and, and you're ready to go. These machines give me that opportunity. Most of my competitors, as I know it, they, that are controls companies, they have to outsource all this stuff. And that means longer lead times. And a lot of these machine shops, you know, they want a minimum quantity order or they're going to charge you through the roof to run their Haas or Moriseki. And I understand that, <laughs> you know, so, so this, you know, this allows me to stay highly competitive and out of a garage, it, it fits the bill. And, 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 I, and I imagine that at some point, if I get a larger shop someplace, I don't, I don't think I'll ever not have the Tormox. I, I think that they, you know, I might have some higher end machines someday, but I think the Tormox will always be there. The conversational stuff on PathPilot is fantastic. The new update where you can rejigger all the conversational stuff and you know edit stuff now, that's, that's a huge deal. It's saved me a lot of time. Um, you know, the fact that you can drop cam code in, into conversational, I used to copy and paste all that and splice it, and I don't have to do that anymore. You know, um, I, find, I find myself a lot, a lot less in CAD and CAM for quick brackets and things than I used to be. And that's, that's a huge time saver. At the end of 2015, I did a job where it was a subsea related job, and there were some three, uh, 316 stainless steel uh, threaded shafts, some threads on the end of each one, um, eight threads per inch, and I did them all manually on my manual machine. And I was sweating bullets the entire time because I had to do 12 of them. The, the timeline was very aggressive. They all worked out, but it took me about 12 hours to go manually do all 12 shafts. I can't take jobs like that. The stress was too much. The, um, you know, there's too many opportunities for a mistake. So after some thought, I decided that, that I probably need to invest in the, the Tormach lathe. So I, I did, um, I got it. But the company calls me like, hey, we need another job like this again. Could you pull it off again? Well, of course I don't want to say no. So I said, yeah, yeah, sure, I can do it. I, I did all 12 shafts in 45 minutes compared to 12 hours. It, you know, a lot of operations just got totally, I, did, did, I didn't even need to do them. And then, of course, the speed at which you can do threading is much faster. And, and the repeatability is, 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 you know, way better than what you're going to get on a manual machine. Anybody who has a lathe wants a mill. Anybody who has a mill wants a lathe. That's just how it goes. I, I do some subsea work, um, and I don't mind doing subsea work. Um, but subsea work complicates everything. You're dealing with pressure. You're dealing with uh, more liability. You're dealing with, uh, I mean, if a, if a factory goes down on land, you, you might be losing substantial money. But if something goes down subsea, you're losing, you know, $50,000 an hour, $100,000 an hour, more. I mean, I've never personally proved this, but I've heard of millions of dollars an hour in some cases. And so you're assuming a lot more risk in the subsea industry. Um, so you really have to make sure all that testing I referred to is, is, is done. Because I have customers that come into the shop, and it is a garage, and I think that, I don't see that as a negative, but I think that some people might, and, and I think that the look and appearance of a machine um, matters. And I think the enclosure really added a lot to the Tormach as far as how it looks and feels as a machine. Um, but I wanted something that kind of looked and felt more like a VMC type thing, and allowed me to control things without having to dive over coolant spraying everywhere. And, uh, and so I, I designed and built this. Um, and um, I, all the parts on this were machined in the Tormach, <laughs> you know. I was nervous that garage manufacturing was gonna be a turnoff. You know, some, some of the companies I work for are massive companies. And when they send me that 
book of terms and conditions they want me to sign, I, I go through it and think there's no way they're going to use me. I'm, I'm a small-time operator. I'm a, you know, uh, you know. I, I'd like to tell all, all other makers out there: if you have the skills to do what they need and nobody else does, they don't care. They'll still hire you. You know, if you're good at what you do, don't be scared to be the small guy to go out there and get it done. Because you know, even the big guys started somewhere, and they started small and 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 grew to something big. And um, I think that. Uh, I think there's a lot of talent all over the world. I think there's a ton of talent. And, and I think that people should be less afraid of trying and just do, you know. At least you know if it failed, you know it failed. But you always wonder if it, was, if it would have ever failed or succeeded if you don't try, so. Thanks for watching. Check out all of our latest videos here. And for more metalworking tips, tricks, and stories, subscribe to our YouTube channel.